that's two lines of code and we have instant pagination, including our, our database query, uh, the UI controls, the page rendering. Welcome to Laravel. <laughs> that's crazy. And actually, let's walk through all of the code so and make sure that I can point to everything to talk about where everything lives and also give you a summary of, of what I learned here. The first thing is the, the PHP artisan command basically creates the stuff we need and gives us like some sensible defaults. It can create models, it can create events. It does all, all it has commands for creating all the things we need so we don't have to create them manually. And what's nice is it is opinionated in that those things always live in the same folders. So we always know where to find them. So like when we create a model, it shows up here. When we create a policy, it, it shows up here. And so the artisan tool has has all of that for us, which is nice. The other thing is we, we started with a, a thing called uh, Breeze and Breeze actually gave us all our authentication. So we ran this one command and then instantly our app had a sign up and login page. We can register new users and we can log in users. We didn't write any extra code for this. So that's another cool thing and then from there uh, they also gave us like the default dashboard and we wanted to work on building this which is users can type stuff in here and then it gets listed here it's like a mini version of, of twitter but that all starts with the controller i guess so we, we ran the command to generate the controller that gave us this and this handles all the things that we would want to do with a chirp which are like our tweets so we have the index, which is the, the page that lists them out. We have store, which actually puts them into the database. We have show, which we didn't implement, but this would be like if we have a single page that shows an individual chirp. We also have edit, which shows the page to be able to edit. And then update is the backend route that actually updates the thing. Um, and then destroy, destroy deletes it. And so we gradually filled out all of these various controller methods, but all of those link up to the routes. So over here, we basically say we have chirps as a resource. We use this controller, and then these are the uh, controller methods that we're going to enable. And this was pretty slick as well, because by default, we specified, okay, only allow those to be visible. And that's fine. And then gradually, as we added each f feature, we added it here, and then that enabled those functions in the controller. Uh, the other nice thing is this middleware here. It was also just built in with Breeze. So after we set up auth, we were able to add the auth middle middleware, and now only logged in users can see this page. Like, so if I log out, I won't be able to see this page. It just redirects me to log in. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's the controller. And then a controller uh, is also linked up to a model. So we specifically had the chirp model, which represents a chirp in our database. And we can specify which fields on the model are editable uh, in the store and up in update methods. In this case, the message property is because when you create a new chirp, it should have a message property. When you update it, you'll be editing the, the message property. The other thing is we set up relationships. So when we set up auth, it automatically creates like a, a user model for us. And all of this was, was created by Breeze, uh, but we wanted to link a user to a chirp. And so on a user model, we say they can have many chirps and uh, we add the relationship there, and then we add the relationship in the other direction over here, and we say uh, a chirp belongs to a user. And this also adds a user method on a chirp. So for any chirp, if we do uh, arrow user, that gives us the user object that is the owner of that given chirp that, that we're working on. So that's the model. And then the other thing are migrations. So the migrations actually uh, create the database tables over here. So we used Artisan to run a command to generate this migration, and then we needed to go add in the extra fields. So a chirp also has a user ID and a message. Uh, one of the nice things that we learned about this is uh, if you specify your foreign ID column name in a conventional way, then the constrained method just works. This actually infers that you want to link this to the user table ID column. So that was pretty slick as well. That actually set up the, the relationship at the database level. So we have our model, we have our controller, and then from there we have all of our views that allow us to interact with all this stuff. So uh, if we go back to the controllers and our chirp controller, uh, the index page is going to render chirps.index. And so these exist in uh, resources, views, chirps, index.blade. So uh, when we go to our chirps page, it's going to render this right here. Uh, chirps.index is a reference to that. And then we're also going to include all of our chirps from the database. 
which is pretty slick. I, li I like the way their ORM works here. So this says there will be a, a data property called chirps in the rendered view that we can have access to. In this case, we're going to iterate over it. So that way we can actually show this here. But uh, this says query the chirp table in our database, include the user relation. I think it's order by newest. Yeah, order by newest. And, uh, and then and get, then get them all. And so this includes that data. So when the page is rendering, we can actually iterate over the data. So uh, Blade is their uh, templating language for actually rendering page. And you can see this for each right here. So the chirps here correspond to the chirps that got rendered from the controller. And then we, we list them all out. And uh, because we included the user data, uh, we have in the template here, um, we have access to the user to have more info about it and stuff like that. But this is basically rendering out each of the each of the posts and then also the, the create form here too. You can use paginate instead of git to paginate the result set. I would need to update my view though, right? That seems like it would be a bit more complicated. I, I would need some... You get pagination out of the box? Wait, 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 let's try it. Because <laughs> that could be fascinating. So in our controller, if we say... Uh, but I, yeah, how is it, how is it going to give us like next and, and previous buttons? We need to add that ourselves, right? Paginate per page two. All right, let's just see what this does. Okay, that gives us two. Um, but how do we get to the next page that we would still have to set that up? Uh, it's like one. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it. Go to Laravel, search for pagination, basic usage, cursor and offset, yada, yada, yada. Come on, come on, come on. Give me the view. Give me the view stuff. Here we go. Yeah, somebody in the chat said it. So <laughs> you just show the links. Okay. Uh, this, this is great. This is too easy. This is, this is insane. So below the list of chirps. No, I, I, I can read chat, but I also want to find it in the docs because if people are trying to do this at home, they're not going to have chat yelling at them. <laughs> and this will just generate the pagination links. This is insane. No way. What the heck? You can see it's putting the page in the query param too. That's two lines of code and we have instant pagination, including our, our database query, uh, the UI controls, the page rendering. Welcome to Laravel. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. Uh, so that, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that was a nice little uh, side, side quest. Uh, but this specifically renders that page and shows us all of this. The other thing to look at is the create method. So this form is going to do a post to our backend. And so if we look in the, uh, in the view, the form does a post request to chirps store. So store is our controller method that's actually going to put the chirp into the database. And you'll notice this all, this all is server rendered with like form requests and everything. We're, we're not using any Ajax or client side JavaScript. This is literally doing a post request when you submit the form and we're, it already has a uh, CSERF protection all set up. It's also interesting that it has validation messages here too. So if I try creating a chirp with no content, the validation is happening on the back end as well. So the way we set that up is for an incoming request to create a chirp, make sure that it has a message property using the validator, which is built in, and then grab the user of the incoming request, grab their chirps. So I showed you earlier on the user model, we added that one to many relationship. So over here, because we added this, we can call that method. And then that in turn has the ability to create chirps in the context of that user. So this is basically how we're saying, take the current user, create a chirp that belongs to them. That's what's going to set the user ID on that created thing and then create them. And validated is the actual chirp object. And then once that's complete, redirect back to the page to display the latest stuff. So if I do this, Post the back end, validate, put it into the database, redirect back to the page and list it out. The Laravel debug bar? Uh, I, I think I'm good for now. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, yeah, I'm good for now. I want, I want to just finish the, the walkthrough and then... Um, uh, debug bar, is so, everyone's saying the debug bar is good. We'll go install the debug bar. Installation. The debug bar will be enabled if app debug is true. All right, let's set it up. And so in our ENV, we need to set app debug to true. It's already set to true. Will it just work? Just refresh. Oh, there's a debug bar. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, we can see 
There's that model. These are the queries that have been run. We can see the literal SQL queries that have been run. We can see all of our views. See the current session info. Cool. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, I have a feeling we have some L Laravel or Laravel converts after just watching me try it. Laravel convert, like people are going to try it now, basically. I'm off by how much bloat it has. The thing to think about is if you're building all of this stuff, if you're building a similar thing from scratch with, let's say, Next.js, you're still going to have a, a, a bunch of similar stuff, right? There, there is a lot of boilerplate, yes, but the, the amount of code that you would have to create, write yourself or set up yourself is very similar. Like, it's honestly less in this scenario. Okay, uh, let's finish the walkthrough. So this method is what gets called on the back end when a post request is submitted by the form and then redirects back to the page. The, the cool things to note here are the validation. Very simple. It's just built in. And then the fact that we can create things in the context of some other model. This is basically their ORM in action, which is pretty slick as well. So that's how we create new things. And then we also set up editing. So on the UI here, we have a drop down. If the chirp belongs to the current user that is logged in, show this, show this drop down. Um, there are some chirps that I don't own where I'm not, yeah, these two are owned by a user called chat. I can't edit those because I don't own them, but if I own them, I get this drop down. And then we created the edit page. So when you click on edit, that takes you to a page that's pre-filled with the message. You can modify it, save it, and then um, it'll show at the top because it's the most recently edited. The way that all of that works is here on the controller, we have the edit method, which just renders the page. So edit is a get to render the edit page because we are dealing with server side rendering here. You'll notice to make sure the current user is allowed to update this chirp. It's just a simple call to authorize. And this was actually set up in our policies. So policies is another concept where you can create a policy that corresponds to uh, some model. And this is how you can set up all of your, your rules about who's allowed to do what. So right here, we say a user can only update a chirp if the chirp's user is the current logged in user. And a user can only delete a chirp if the current, actually it just, it just calls this. So it's the, it's, the, it's the same rules, but a user must be the owner of that chirp to either update or delete it. So we set this policy up. Uh, I'm trying to remember where we hooked up the policy to the model. Is it just in the model itself? Yeah, this is one thing I don't remember. Where is the chirp policy? Oh, it's just auto-loaded. Fascinating. Yeah, so all we had to do was create it, and it just works. Yeah, it's automatic. Yeah, so you, you create it here, and then over on the controllers, because it is created, we have, we have access to it. So uh, when someone is trying to load the edit page, they can only load it if they're the owner of that chirp. And you'll also notice, I mean, maybe you didn't notice this, but we don't have a query here that says, get chirp from database where ID equals whatever else. It's just automatic, right? Like when you go to this page, uh, edit slash ID, under the hood, it's already just querying for chirp with ID 11. Plain and simple. You don't have to write that code. And then it renders the page with the chirp so that we can display the current values of the chirp itself. And then the update method on the controller is what's called when the edit form is submitted. So when we click save, that goes here. Uh, first of all, we make sure that the current user is allowed to update the given chirp. We then validate it. Right now, we do have code duplication, right? We're validating in the same way for when we're storing and updating. But we did learn that it is possible to extract our validators into a rules thing, like a validation contract. And then we don't have to have code duplication. But that's 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 for the future. Like we, in, in a larger code base, we wouldn't want to be duplicating this everywhere. We could just extract it into a validator. And then this is the call to the database to actually update it. And then after it's updated, we redirect back to the home page. Uh, I think that's about it. I mean, after this, we also have the delete method. And the delete method is th this little button is just a form uh, with a, a delete request on submit. So when you click it, it submits the form, uh, does a delete request uh, to the back end, which then calls the destroy method. So make sure we own this chirp, delete the chirp, redirect back to the home page. Am I missing anything? After that, we did, we, we did set up notifications. But that, that's the main stuff. I think to, if, if we kind of like take a step back of, I think when I was going through the tutorial, it kind of did feel like a, uh, it felt like a lot because they're, they're throwing all of the, these new concepts onto us. But when it really comes down to it, the actual code I would be writing is just this, right? It would just be a few of these and then a little bit of view code 
to to get it uh, like view layer code to get the stuff rendered out in the way that I want it. And yeah, I mean, technically this took me about two hours, but if I wasn't explaining everything as I was going or, or like talking to Twitch chat, I could easily have done this in like 10 minutes, easily in 10 minutes, especially once once you get the hang of this, like a lot of your controllers are going to start to look the same too, right? Like the code here could probably even be extracted into something that's more reusable because this whole create, read, update, delete thing is going to be so similar for every other portion of my app that I have. So from there, I would be able to even write stuff even in quicker, I think. Yeah, we, we did see the email sent. So that, that was the last piece that we set up is notifications. So uh, we have it so that any time a chirp is created, it sends an email to all other users that are not the person that created the chirp. And that happened with events. So we created this chirp created event. I don't think we had to touch this. The only thing we had to do was inject the chirp into the chirp created event. And then we had to add a listener. Well, first of all, we set, I think we set it up on the chirp, right? Yeah, so the chirp dispatches an event. So it dispatches a created event. And you can, you can tap into all of the other things that happen on a given model. So you dispatch it. And then we have a listener for that dispatched event. And in this case, the listener is the one that sends the, the email. So it's listening for those events to happen. And when it receives one, it sends an email to every user that is not the current user. And the actual email sending happens in notifications. So over here in notifications is where we can do the mail thing and then and then send those out. I, I'm, I'm sure that if we wanted to do things like send a, a push notification or send a WebSocket event, it would probably happen in this file instead of sending in, sending an email. One of the things, we, one of the questions we had at the beginning is like, what does Laravel and PHP do? Is it is it just MVC model view controller? Is it just server side rendering? Um, is it just API routes? And what we learned is it's it's all of them. It's basically whatever you decide to do. We specifically went down the MVC and SSR route specifically with Blade, but it is possible to use like Vue or React on the front end and just have like API routes. That's also possible. And so we specifically decided to start there. The built-in ORM is sweet. I mean, I, I I don't think I can I can convey how cool it is that a lot of this stuff we don't have to do manually. Here, like we didn't even have to query the database to say, give me the chirp with this ID. It's, it just works, right? Like I <laughs> I guess I've I've worked in back-end frameworks like in C sharp that like kind of that work in a similar way. But the fact that we don't see more of this in the Node.js world is pretty crazy. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's absolutely fully, full feature, fully, it has all the stuff. That's it. That's all. Yeah. So that, that's, <laughs> that's the end of me trying uh, Laravel and PHP. I, I'm honestly really impressed. And I do think I'll keep it in mind when I am deciding to build something new. And honestly, like we've only scratched the service surface, right? I've only been learning about it for the past three hours. There's so much more to learn. There's so much more built in. Um, yeah. Don't we have Drizzle and Prisma? It's, I mean, it's not the same because when you when you hook it up, like let's say with TRPC or something like that, you still technically have to write that query, right? You, you still have to write the code that says get from database where ID is is X, and even that we don't have here. Like there, there's literally no code that says get the chirp with ID, simply because it's on the controller and it's tied to the URL. It all of that is hidden from us. Final conclusions about uh, Laravel. It's pretty slick. It's it's full featured, batteries included. Everything you want to do is there, and it's just built into the framework. You don't have to go searching for other libraries. Um, you can just use the stuff that's built in, and that's really cool. And also, because it's opinionated, everything is always in the same spot. So I could imagine, like, if you dropped me into a Laravel app, I could I could get up and going pretty quickly uh, if I was familiar with what all these folders are for and, and what everything was uh, and where everything lives and stuff like that.